the most famous dinosaur of all time, is without a doubt the Tyrannosaurus Rex. The name literally means Tyrant Lizard King. But what makes this king so great? Because scientists measure size in weight, the T-Rex is the biggest carnivore to have ever existed. It is estimated that the T-Rex weight around 9,300 kilos. For comparison, the Gigantosaurus is around 7,400 kilos. The T-Rex also had one of the most powerful bites of any animal ever. With a bite force of about 35,000 newtons, it is almost double that of strongest living crocodiles. Although there are some who say it might have been a scavenger, it was likely an active hunter. With enough strength to take down powerful dinosaurs like Triceratops, it was truly one of the greatest apex predators of its time. Arthropleura was a giant millipede that lived during the Carboniferous period. It could grow up to 2.5 meters, or about 8 feet in length, and weight about 50 kilos or 110 pounds. It is believed that the fossils recovered from this giant millipede are actually molting shells and not carcasses. From these remains we can tell it had a strong exoskeleton. Because of this, it is unlikely that it had any predators. It is commonly accepted that it was an herbivore, although no direct evidence of its diet has been found. It was thought to have gone extinct after the Carboniferous rainforest collapse. However, fossils have been found that are dated after this event. Thanks to the recent Jurassic World movie, Therizinosaurus has had a spike in popularity. But what do we actually know about it? The only fossils we have of the Therizinosaurus is the arms and claws. The rest of the appearance of the Therizinosaurus is actually based on similar dinosaurs in the same family. It is estimated to have reached 9 to 10 meters or 30 to 33 feet in length, with estimated heights from 4 to 5 meters or 13 to 16 feet. The function of the claws is still debated. Some claim it to be for intimidation, while others say it is likely used as a defensive weapon. It was likely an herbivore, so the claws could also have functioned as a tool to harvest vegetation. Ammonites first appeared in the Devonian about 450 million years ago and have stayed around until the end of the Cretaceous 66 million years ago. They come in all shapes and sizes. The biggest ammonite currently known to us is the Parapuzotia. This enormous ammonite could reach up to 2.5 meters. It was likely an open water predator that hunted on fish, other cephalopods, and maybe even other ammonites. Despite its size, it was still at risk of being hunted by larger marine predators, such as sharks and mosasauruses. The Globodons, for example, had specialized teeth that could easily crack open the thick armored shell of this giant ammonite. Often mistaken for a dinosaur, Dimetrodon was a synapsid from the early Permian. It could grow up to 4.7 meters or 15 feet in length. Although it has a similar appearance to reptiles, it's more closely related to mammals. Its most recognizable feature is the sail on its back. The function of the sail is still unknown. However, there are some theories. One is that it is simply for display purposes. Another is that it might have used it to regulate its body temperature. Dimetrodon was likely an apex predator in its environment. Its diet consisted mostly of fish, reptiles and amphibians. This is the Anomalocaris. The name means abnormal shrimp. It got this name because when it was first discovered in 1886, only the mandibles were preserved. These mandibles looked a lot like a pair of strange shrimps. Later, its mouth was also misidentified as a jellyfish and its body as a sea sponge. It was not until 1979 that it was discovered that the three previous identified creatures were actually one giant creature. It grew to be about 60 centimeters to a meter long, which for the time was quite big. It also possessed one of the most advanced eyes of the time, and it may have been one of the earliest apex predators. Solacina Cthulhu is a strange creature with 45 tentacles. Its name, as you may have guessed, is a reference to H.P. Lovecraft's Cthulhu. At just 3 centimeters or 1 inch wide, it may not have been as imposing as the Great Old One, but his looks certainly do its namesake justice. Using modern techniques that involve cutting the fossil layer by layer and photographing each layer, researchers were able to reconstruct it as a virtual fossil. Using this technique, the researchers were able to observe the fossil in great detail, from the inside and outside. When analysing this virtual fossil similarities between it and living sea cucumbers was observed. So now, we have scientific evidence that Cthulhu is related to sea cucumbers. Utah Raptor was the largest of the raptors. It could reach lengths of 5.5 meters or 18 feet. Due to its size, 
it was likely slower than its relatives like Velociraptor and Deinonychus. It did, however, possess powerful legs, which would allow it to deliver strong kicks without losing balance. Combined with the dagger-like claw on its toes, it could take on large prey such as iguanodonts. Remains of a large group of Utah raptors were found together with an iguanodontid. Further study revealed that these raptors all died in quicksand, likely tying to scavenge the iguanodontid. This may suggest pack-hunting behavior, although it is unclear whether the raptors all got stuck at the same time. With the Utah raptor being the largest raptor, let's also take a look at the smallest. The Microraptor was about one meter or three feet in length. Its fossils were exceptionally well preserved. In these fossils, we can clearly see the large feathers on both its arms and legs. Using these feathered limbs, it could glide between trees. There are some who claim that Microraptor might have even been capable of powered flight. It likely hunted at night, and thanks to preserved stomach contents, we know that smaller mammals were at least part of its diet. Amargosaurus is one of the most unique and recognizable sauropods. With only 9 to 13 meters or 30 to 43 feet in length, it is on the small side for sauropods. So, what makes this dinosaur so unique? Well, it possessed two rows of spiky bones along its neck. It was once thought that these spikes protruded from the neck, giving the Amargosaurus a defensive weapon against predators. However, a 2022 study of these spike bones revealed that they were likely covered in and connected by a layer of skin. So now the most likely reconstruction looks a bit like this. What is your preferred look, and what prehistoric creature would you like to see next?